In collaboration with Brain Mind, let's discuss how stress impacts brain health and its impact on Alzheimer's disease prevention. Many people think it's just okay to tough out stress. Oh, I'm tough. I can handle it. I can take on more. I can do more. It's not going to affect me. I'm going to have a tough exterior. But unfortunately, stress on the exterior can have a very negative effect on the interior, and that interior is cognitive function. Believe it or not, stress increases a variety of different pathways in the brain and in the body. Cortisol is something called a stress hormone. There's a variety of different biological processes that really skid all out of control when a person is not able to handle their stress. When it comes to Alzheimer's disease specifically, there's a specific type of stress that is absolutely the worst when it comes to its impact on brain health. Worry or rumination, thinking the same thought over and over and over again. When those thoughts are spiraling out of control, it doesn't just sometimes distract you from your day-to-day -day activities, but the inflammation and cascade throughout your body and your brain actually leads to shrinkage of certain parts of your brain. That's striking. The type of worry or rumination that has the most significant impact on brain health is something called RNT. RNT stands for repetitive negative thinking. In the past, about 15 years ago even, we started to understand the impact of stress on cognitive health. We understood that people that lived high stress lifestyles that didn't try to mitigate their stress through stress reduction and stress management techniques, they had poor cognitive outcomes as they aged. But more recently, we've actually taken this understanding and taking the scientific research much further. Believe it or not, people that have the highest degree of RNT not only have poorer health outcomes, but have higher levels of amyloid accumulation in the brain. They also have higher levels of tau accumulation in the brain. And these are the two characteristic pathologic proteins that build up in brain cells that really synonymize what Alzheimer's disease is. The other part about repetitive negative thinking is it leads to brain shrinkage over time. When you combine amyloid, tau, and brain shrinkage, that's fast-forwarding Alzheimer's disease progression. We don't want that. So what can we do about stress? First, breathe. Take a deep breath. All of us need to try to make a plan for stress. Everyone's plan is going to be a little different. Some people may say, meditation, not for me. Not my thing. Some people may say, ah, take a vacation. No, I like working. Not for me. The key here is figure out something. In terms of taking vacations, periodic vacations have been shown to reduce stress levels. Whether it's taking a three-day weekend here or there, whether it's scheduling one week of vacation every three to four months, whatever trick you have to do, incorporate that trick into your life. Stress reduction techniques that have been well studied include meditation, especially transcendental meditation, as well as MBSR, mindfulness-based stress reduction. Mindfulness-based stress reduction was a technique that was studied extremely vigorously at the University of Massachusetts. Some really exciting research showed you can learn how to participate in a mindfulness-based stress reduction program. You can be trained online, you can buy a book, and you can actually protect your cognitive health and brain health over time. One of the also downstream effects, a side effect, is improvements in medical outcomes as well. When it comes to meditation, and specifically transcendental meditation, there are different ways and different strategies to quiet the mind. Transcendental meditation, for example, 20 minutes in the morning, and ideally would work better 20 minutes twice a day, has been shown to quiet the mind and improve across a variety of conditions, from post-traumatic stress and combat veterans to people that are suffering from cognitive ailments. So the take-home point with stress reduction is take it seriously. There's a biological basis for mind-body interactions. Fast-forwarding aging in the brain 
can be counteracted by stress reduction techniques. I have a lot of high power patients that are just always moving, always on the go, and try to allow stress to just hit them and roll off like Teflon. And unfortunately, that only lasts for so long. People can be affected by stress in a variety of silent ways. Aside from cognitive dysfunction, elevated stress levels can lead to elevated blood pressure, problems with ulcers in the stomach, a variety of health conditions that all synergize together for a person to age in a much faster rate. We don't want to do that. Longevity, health span, and brain span are all equally impacted by stress. So to learn more about stress, talk to your doctor, talk to a psychologist, talk to someone that can actually teach you potentially how to meditate. There are also free resources online, buy a book, but when in doubt, if stress is causing a problem to the degree where you are having symptoms of depression, mild depression, anxiety, and repetitive negative thinking, it's very important to seek medical care. When it comes to depression, depression is actually a risk factor for Alzheimer's disease. And I believe that it is actually a modifiable risk factor. People with midlife or early life depression that get that depression treated through either pharmacologic means, through therapy, or through other ways may actually be able to reduce their risk of Alzheimer's and protect their cognitive function. So when stress, anxiety, and depression all coexist together, that's again, fast forwarding brain aging. So we encourage people to be mindful of their stress, take it seriously, and make a plan.